Hello. In this lesson, we're going to review proportions and similarity to prepare for our test over Unit 5. My first example says if triangle KLM is similar to triangle RPQ and the perimeter of triangle KLM is 32, find the perimeter of triangle RPQ. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my picture. When I see this similar, I know there's going to be a scale factor. I'm going to compare the first triangle to the second triangle. So in my triangle KLM, that's always going to be my up triangle, my numerator triangle. And RPQ, I'm going to make that my denominator triangle. My down, everything's going to go in the bottom of the ratios or the bottom of the fractions. Okay. Let's see what else we need to label. The perimeter of KLM is 32. So oh, even though I don't have all my sides of KLM, I know when I add them together, my perimeter here is 32. And I am trying to find the perimeter of RPQ. Okay, the perimeter is reduced to the scale factor. The corresponding sides reduce to the scale factor. So when I look at my first triangle, I see that LM is 14. And when I look at my second triangle, I see that PQ is 15. So I want to make sure that those are corresponding sides. So I'm going to use my similar, similarity statement and look at where L and M are. LM are my second two letters in my triangle name. And then PQ are also my second two letters in my triangle name. So these are corresponding pieces. I'm going to compare the 14 I'm going to put on top because that's where I put my up arrow over the 15 I'm going to put that on the bottom because that's where I put my down arrow. My rate, my scale factor would be whatever this reduces to since my that fraction doesn't reduce I can leave it like that and then compare set that equal to the comparison or the ratio of my perimeters and again I need to stay consistent with my up and my down. So my up arrow says in the top of my fraction should be my 32 and in the bottom of my fraction my perimeter should be X. There I have a proportion and that proportion can be cross multiplied to solve. So I'm going to mul multiply 14 times X and that's going to be equal to 15 times 32. Okay, so 15 times 32, and again, I'm not using anything fancy. I've just got my cell phone here. 15 times 32 is 480. So 14x equals 480. Divide both sides by 14. And x equals... 480 divided by 14. I already have the 480 in my calculator, so I can just hit divide by 14. And I get 34.28571413. We're going to round this to three decimal places, so 285. I look after the 5, and it's a 7. So I do want to round that up to 34.286. 34.286. Okay? That is my value of X, which is the perimeter of RPQ, which is what I was trying to find. So that is my final answer for a number, or for example, 1. Okay. Example 2, two similar figures have a scale factor of 2 to 5. The perimeter of the smaller figure is 30. What is the perimeter of the larger figure? Well, I know the ratio of the perimeters will reduce to the same ratio as the scale factors, which says 2 colon 5. To work with it mathematically, I'm going to change that into a fraction where the first number is always the numerator and the second number is always the denominator. Okay, The perimeter of the smaller figure is 30. Now they didn't tell me which is on the top and which is on the bottom, but common sense says if my smaller number is on the top, then my smaller figure must have been in the numerator and my larger figure must have been in the denominator. So the perimeter of the smaller figure, that means that's going to go on top, 
is 30. What's the perimeter of the larger one? That's where my x is going to go. And this I can cross multiply. So 2 times x is going to give me 2 times x. That's going to be equal to the other side when I multiply. 30 times 5, which is 30 times 5, which is 150. Okay, I skipped writing a step there. Again, I did 30 times 5 to get that 150. So now I just need to divide both sides by 2 so that I get 1 times x, which is just 1x, equals 150 divided by 2 is 75. And again, I'm just using my regular phone for a calculator. Nothing fancy, although on your test you will have access to that graphing calculator in CMS. Okay, so there's number two. Let's look at number three. Number three, given segment DE is parallel to segment AC, I'm going to mark that DE is parallel to AC, write four unique proportions for the triangles. Okay, so I need to remember that my sides of the triangles that are intercepted by those parallel lines are divided into proportional parts. So I can look at these two pieces and compare them over here. So I can go B to D. So this top piece to the piece right under it, D to A, is equal to, so if I did the top left and the bottom left, I'm going to do the same thing on the, other, on the right side. Top right, bottom right, B, E over E, C. Okay? So that's one. Let's do another one. Um, let's just flip these upside down, right? Let's do the bottom to the top, bottom to the top. So DA over BD equals EC over BE. I just flipped those over. I just did the reciprocals, okay? Remember, you can also go side to side. So I could compare BD, the top piece, on the left to the top piece on the right, BE. If I do the top on the left, top on the right, then I'm going to go bottom left, bottom right, DA and EC. Okay? I could switch those. I could do, let's do the bottom EC. So the bottom right to the bottom left, DA. So I'm kind of taking the reciprocal of my second fraction over here, which means it's going to equal the reciprocal of that fraction there. So if I did bottom right, bottom left, then I'm going to go top right, top left, BE over BD. Okay? Now, on your test, this one is going to look just very much like what you see here. It's going to have multiple choice of different possibilities of how you could set it up. What I would recommend is setting up one that you know is correct for sure, and then testing the others. So if I know that this is correct, when I test the others, I should check to see, is BD going to get cross-multiplied to EC every single time? Is BD going to multiply to EC? BD multiplies to EC. BD multiplies to EC. So all of these match. And then my other one, DA, should match with BE across. DA, B, oh look, see, I did make a mistake here. BC, I did the whole side. So this one didn't work. DA should be across from BE. So I made a mistake here. This should be BE. If this was a multiple choice that said which of these does not work, this would have been my answer because I made that mistake there. Okay. Here again, DA should be across from BE. DA and BE. DA and BE. So that one, notice I caught that I made a mistake there. Again, if this was a multiple choice and it said which one does not match, this would have been my answer, okay, because I made that mistake there. All right, let's look at number four. In the figure below, ABCD is similar to 
WXYZ and has a scale factor of 3 to 2. The perimeter of ABCD is 24. What is the perimeter of WXYZ? So here we have yet another perimeter problem. Okay. When I look here, it tells me my similarity statement, ABCD comes first. So that is going to go always in the top of my fraction. WXYZ goes on the bottom, so that, or comes second, so that's going to go on the bottom of my fraction. We have a scale factor of 3 to 2. So my scale factor equals 3 to 2. The 3 comes first, so it goes on top, and the 2 goes on the bottom. The perimeter of triangle ABCD is 24. What is the other perimeter? Remember, your perimeters will also reduce to the scale factor. So my perimeter that goes on top is the 24 over the perimeter that goes on the bottom is the x. And that's going to reduce to the same scale factor that the sides reduce to, 3 over 2. Okay, so now this can be cross multiplied and solved. 3 times x is 3x equals 2 times 24, which is 48. Division property of equality, divide by 3, divide by 3, and x equals 48 divided by 3. Again, I'm just going to use my regular old calculator. 48 divided by 3 is 16. 16. So 16 is x, which is the perimeter of wxyz, and that is what they were asking me to find. So my answer here is 16. Okay? All right, so there are the first four examples that are preparing us for our test tomorrow. In the next video, we're going to look at the next page, examples 5 through 9. All right, thank you so much for watching.